In this next episode of the Waboripedia, the figure behind the ink, interview series, where we interview respected horishi or traditional Japanese tattooers from all around the world, we'll be sitting down with David Ramirez. David Ramirez is a Spain-based horishi, creating fantastic modern interpretations of artworks of old. Join me as we sit down with David Ramirez and learn more about the figure behind the ink. David Ramirez, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I've been waiting some time to do that with you. I like your content a lot. I saw some of your interviews. And yeah, it's my pleasure to be here with you. Awesome. Awesome. You're based out of Granada in, in the south of Spain, right? Yeah, so the Spain. I'm I'm from Barcelona, Barcelona, but moved here 20 years ago to Granada. It's a small city in the south of Spain, it's a beautiful city, very well known for the Alhambra. You know the Alhambra, yeah. beautiful building here. Awesome, awesome. All right, so before we get started, I just wanted to call out that I've been doing these shorter videos. Besides the interviews, I've been doing short videos where I talk about specific subjects or specific themes, like some of the videos have been the Tamatori Hime video, the, the Fudo Mio video. Yeah. And something that happened, you know, every time I do those videos, I ask the community like, hey, can you share some exemplary tattoos, some great tattoos so I can show them to the world? And what I noticed was that almost every time your name always comes up, some tattoo by you is always recommended. So I was like, I got to get this guy in the interview. Awesome. So. <laughs> awesome. Cool. cool. So very happy to have you. And you know, that that being said, let's just get started. Why don't we start from the beginning? What can you tell us about your background and how you got involved with Orimono? Well, um I I'm a a hood kid. I don't have any special background or any art background before I start tattooing. Tattooing pretty much saved my life. As Similar story as many, many people. Um, yeah, I started young to get tattoos. I like the tattoo, not because any of that uh, hardcore skate or art background, just the hood. The kids, the older kids from the hood has some tattoos. And also my, my family, in my family, I saw a lot of tattoos when I was a kid. Uh, not professional tattoo, just handbook tattoos because the lifestyle, the lifestyle, or military tattoos. Uh, actually, my, my father has a beautiful butterfly handbook in the chest in honor to Papillon, the uh, the book. Uh, and also, my my eldest has. Uh, yeah, I remember something from Sahara, like a camel. Um, yeah, I saw a lot of lot of tattoos when I was a kid, and I I I love tattoos since I saw for the first time. And when I was 16, I started to draw tattoos, but not never thought about being tattooer. Just draw with some design for, for my friends. Um, just small tribals, you know, kids stuff for young kids. Uh, we were 15, 16 years old, but never thought about being a tattooer. Um, yeah, I don't know what end. When I was 19, more or less, I started to get more exposed to tattoo and more interested and tried to find a job in a tattoo shop. I didn't know how to do it. Uh, yeah, not even wanted to be a tattooer, just want to be involved in the tattoo in some way. Mm -hmm. So I started to work in a tattoo shop with a guy and his wife for some time and then lucky I, I i was so lucky that el monga you know el monga has to uh, an awesome tattooer from argentina but living in barcelona for more than 20 years now with a huge career in, in traditional style but crazy style very very personal style and uh, i was working for him and he yeah he he offered me an apprenticeship not super traditional, not the hard ones, but pretty much traditional. I, I learned all about tattooing, the roots of tattooing from him. Mm. Even, you know, uh, making needles and yeah, all the craft, 
or from tattooing. I learned it from him. I will have, after two years, I moved to Granada with pretty much 20 tattoos on my, on my portfolio and mm. yeah, looking for, for some place to work in Granada. It was so difficult. It's only, it was at that time only three, four tattoo shops, maybe two professional tattoo shops. Uh, one very old school and a couple of shops that also make tattoos in the back of the shop. Mm. So it was not easy. But I was lucky and get find a job at the end, a new shop that they don't know too much about tattoos. So kind of, yeah, I was lucky because I didn't have any experience at all. So, <laughs> But the, I got the job and after a short time, I, I, I meet. My friend David Sanchez, you know, maybe his work. He he makes also Japanese tattoos, amazing Japanese tattoos. We work together on on the studio now. At at that time, we opened Unity. Unity Tattoo is a street shop, still open. We 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 pass to the the crew that used to work there, and they they are the owners now, uh, and and I work in that private studio. Yeah, pretty much that was the the beginning of and. Yeah, that being involved in Japanese tattoo uh, was just a consequence of the love for tattooing. Uh, I, I I started since the beginning uh, trying to do old school stuff, even tribal, tribal stuff, like Marquesas, Borneo, uh, Tahiti, that old school, that more, more classic tribal also, and Japanese. Japanese tattoo. Since the beginning, I, I tried to grow that and try to do small tattoos in that style. And when I remember, I remember when I moved to Granada, and I was I was tattooing for two years, and I moved to Granada. Uh, Monga gave me a little bit chat, you know, like, "Well, now you you go. Uh, good luck. Uh, thank you for all this time." Um, and he told me, you, you must do Japanese tattoo. Mm. But I, I keep trying many styles, not Japanese only, just trying, trying and drawing old school and tattooing a lot of old school stuff and Japanese, also Japanese tattoo, but not, not only Japanese tattoo. It was after my my first trip to Japan that I start to think about the idea um, of move to do all in Japanese, but it takes few trips to Japan also to make the decision to do only only Japanese that it was in 2000, 2014, I think. But yeah, my, my first contact with Japanese tattoo was, was through manga and probably through that book Maybe you know that book. It's a book where you can see tattoos from Horiyoshi, all, all work from Horiyoshi the third and Hori King and Horigoro. It's the Japanese tattoo. So it's a cheap book. Uh, you can find it today also, uh, not all free. And it's it's an amazing book. I was shocked by that book and was my, one of my main references since the beginning. Okay. Awesome. Oh, that's great. And and that's amazing. So, so basically what you're saying is that, you know, you were sort of finding yourself, finding your own niche or your own style. And then you, you're sort of self-taught in, in becoming the, the tattooer that you are uh, now, right? At, at least in Japanese from, from what I'm hearing. No, 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 not self-doubt. Of course not. Monga teach me. Monga, he knows how to do Japanese. I saw a lot of Japanese tattoos from him. He stopped doing Japanese and other styles. Maybe when I moved to Granada, uh, he was he, he owned a, a street shop, little street shop, and he made all the work come in. But great, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. And then when I moved to Granada, maybe he started to stop doing that stuff and focus on old school and his crazy style. And also then my friend David, he likes Japanese culture a lot, and he has been a a good influence to me also um, and yeah um, many 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 tattooers not not self-doubt just 
a lot of influence from everybody and a lot of people that have been very generous with me. Uh, we can talk about that for sure in the next questions. But of course, you know, Rico and Shion from Darumagoya, Japan. And my first trip to Japan, I meet them and, and they have been a big influence to me and they became friends and, and helped me a lot. Not, not so out at all. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. No, you, you're just very, very humble, you know, and the reason I say that is because, you know, some people say, you know, oh, I did an apprentice under, under somebody specifically. So I'm self-taught, right? And so, uh, it's very nice to hear that you're so humble about it. Hey, I learned from different people and, and they taught yeah, me writing. Definitely. Definitely. Cool. Awesome. So sort of transitioning and, or, or just diving deeper into that. So what can you tell us about your, your current uh, composition style and, and your color selection. Well, I was still, still trying to find the way and I changed from time to time. Uh, but nowadays I try to do it simple as much as I can. Sometimes it's difficult. I can avoid to put some kind of detail in the, in the images, in the background. And I love simple. Simple drawings, simple backgrounds, uh, with balance between black and gray. Of lately, in, in the last years, of course, I start to use more black. Even even in the last couple of years, I used to do my grays a little bit lighter, and uh, I'm I'm doing I'm trying to do it a little bit more dense gray. Uh, yeah, you know, red. Green, yellow, brown. I like that colors. Probably from my my past doing a lot of old school tattoos, like traditional Americana tattoos. Mm -hmm. That also the, the the palette of the colors are very limited. Also, so yeah, try to keep it simple. I, I wish I I could draw more ugly. You know, <laughs> I I I like that feeling. That old really old school feeling. A little bit. Ugly but powerful. Yeah, I would like. I wish to do something like that someday, but need need to keep working to do that. <laughs> it's not easy. That's more fancy, more easy. More yeah. simple, more difficult. That's exactly what I was about to say. That you know, people see these simple looking works and they think, oh, that's easy. But actually, no. The simplicity is getting that simplicity is very hard. So it's yes, cool that you brought it up. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I did notice your your rather limited color palette, and we're gonna be walking later through some of your work so people can can see them, and you can talk about your your style in, in action, right? But just wanted to get a little a little hint, a little taste of, of it before we we dive into that. But sort of uh, continuing before we do that, uh, do you have like a favorite subject to tattoo? No. Anything, if it's a Japanese image uh, from Japanese culture, it's okay to me. It, it's okay. It, you know, if, if I must say something, uh, I prefer the background mm. it, over the image even. You, you can have a not super cool image, not super good at drawing, kind of ugly, not perfect. But if you have a cool background, if you have a good balance background you have a great japanese tattoo so my, my if, if we talk about the image of a japanese tattoo my favorite part is is the background and it's not easy also it's, it's difficult to get a, a good background solid uh not not only about technique technically it's not about drawing and composition it's it's not easy but background's super important to me and it's my, my favorite, but about subject, I don't. I like everything, images, uh, um, human characters, heroes, religious, Buddhist image, like of course, dragons, even flowers. I love to do just background and and flowers. They, mm -hmm. I like everything. I love everything. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, and, and what you said, you know, that the background is is so important. It's something that we hear. A lot in the in the old masters, you know, they would say, "Hey, that's that's really what makes or breaks 
uh, traditional Japanese tattoo, the, the background. And we also hear it from some form of modern uh, masters as well. So it's also nice to hear that you, you have that focus on making sure the background is yeah is good. Okay. Yeah, when I, I freehand, uh, I do some stuff freehand, some 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 images I use stencil for some back piece, but always background is of course always freehand, and uh, it takes time to me. I I take a lot of care. Sometimes just a line, find the the good the good lighting for a for a spiral or mm. the right placement. Or just uh, clouds or for a wave, it takes time to me. I, I I take a lot of care in that in that part. Good, yeah, that's that's good to hear because you know obviously tattoos should be tailored to the the body of of the person getting the tattoo, yeah. right? You you don't want something that's just a, I don't know a, a stencil that somebody downloaded from from Google or whatever, and and then they just yeah tattoo over it. So it's good that you're freehanding the background and make sure it. it fits into the body shape of, of whoever it is that you're tattooing. Yeah. There you go. Cool. What about, you know, you said that you like, uh, you you have the focus on the background and you're pretty much happy with, with Japanese uh, subject matter. What about, is there a subject or design that you, you think it would be cool to tattoo, but you just haven't had the chance to, to do yet? A, a, a lot, a lot of them. It's huge. The imagery and the histories you can you can do in a, in a Japanese tattoo. It's so huge. I don't even know all of them. It's it's so huge. Uh, probably, I w- I would like to do more uh, religious images, like uh, Buddhist images and gods, Bosatsu's canon. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's difficult for for non-Japanese people, for Spanish people, maybe my my, my customers are from Spain, mm-hmm. uh, to connect with some images. It's more easy than others. Of course, in a subconscious level, mm-hmm. uh, some people connect, even if they don't know the story, they don't know the 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 image. Something catch their attention. And they can choose. Many many people uh, ask for a tattoo, and they are kind of open. And I try to to I, I don't like to to tell them what to get. I like some kind of idea, mm-hmm. uh, and after that, can be something very simple. Like I, I ask, do you, do you like do you you like to have some animal or maybe some image, some human, some god? I don't. Talk about Buddhist, maybe just some uh, protector, and yeah. if, 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 then I show some images. If they don't have any clear idea, then I show some images, and I try to just take a look. And if some image, uh, some painting, figure, catch your eye, tell you something, you you feel connected, some reason, whatever. It don't need to be very many meaningful. Just. I like this. Then we can talk about the meaning. We can find research uh, information about the image. I can tell you which meaning has behind the story behind. And all that process making the people connect. And yeah, I want this. Yes, that's that's for me. But coming back to religious images, it's kind of difficult, a little bit more difficult here in 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 Spain, maybe. Or just need to, to do the proposal more often, or <laughs> or paint it more and show the people examples. Probably, probably. But you know, one image that people here, even here, uh, connect easy with with that image is Fudo Mio. And Fudo Mio, I, I I probably I I had four bad pieces, a couple of them done, and a couple two more in the process. Fudo Mio. For some reason, it's a very powerful image, and people don't need to know too too much. Then, of course, when they choose the image, you talk about, and they get only love with the mm. meaning and the image. But people connect with Fudomio a lot. Easy, easy for to connect. Uh, you know, it's super powerful image. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, no, that's interesting. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure that, you know, what you're mentioning applies really much, pretty much everywhere that's not heavy into Buddhist Buddhism or, or Buddhist, uh, imagery, right? Cause they just don't understand the, the religion. They don't understand wh yeah. what is this woman? Why, why is she holding this or holding that? What well, what is it? Right. So it, it makes sense that perhaps it's, it's a tougher sell, but I think at the same time, what you mentioned, just showing them more of, Hey, this is how awesome I can yeah. this image. It's going to help a lot. <laughs> Of course, of course. Some of them are super beautiful, so that catch the eye. Some others, mm. you can feel the power of the image, and for some people, that power also catch the eye. Yeah, takes time, but one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh well, well, this this video here is this interview here is is one step into towards the right direction. People should get some more Buddhist tattoos from from the lead here. Uh, awesome. What about um? What about in terms of like Suikoden? Do you have like any favorite outlaws or, or singings from Suikoden? Well, like all, all you know, Suikoden, it's uh, the the Bible of Japanese tattoo, probably all that powerful. Even if we talk about Miyoshi Suikoden, uh, pretty much all the images can be uh, an amazing back piece. And it, you need to redraw and Feet in the body, but pretty much the top position, everything works so good. So, any image from the sweet golden, I think it's it's amazing. But yeah, you know the the more classics maybe, and what I like the most, like Kumi on Ryu, uh, yeah, Tao Show, yeah, Rory Hakucho, Cho Yun with the the gate. That that yeah. images I like. I try. I I start a few bad pieces with that images, but never finish. Uh, you know, <laughs> you most of the time, uh, I don't know. I, I don't don't think about that too much, but maybe 10, 15 percent of the things that we start, uh, we finish at the end. It, you know, it's it's a, it's a long process. It's painful. It takes time. It takes it's, it's not not cheap. Uh, so it's not easy to get. Uh, to get a uh, Japanese yeah. body suit, it's a lot of commitment. Yeah. So I want a lot of yeah. lot of work never never finished around. I think that's that's pretty normal. That, that obviously not just you. Like I think all across the world, right? People face the same situation because most Western people they they might get a one point tattoo, right? They they go yeah. into the they walk into the shop, they walk out, they're done. They they have the tattoo. Yeah. But, with Japanese, obviously, it's a commitment. Even with the machine, right? It's a commitment. Weeks, months, maybe even years. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, it's psychologically and um, physically, it's, it's it's not easy. It's not. Easy. I I need to say, I must say, I'm super lucky. Uh, I I have really good uh, customers that became kind of friends. Not not close friends. Not that we have a close relationship, but really good customers that. And strong people. I got amazed with most of the time how strong they are, and, and yeah, the commitment. But yeah, but some of them can do it or, or can't do it now. Maybe came back in the future when when they are ready. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, we've talked about people who who might or might not finish, but certainly there are many who do. So let's actually take a dive into some of your tattoo works. Let's start by sharing my screen. All right. Yeah. So, so I think you, you know, the drill, right? Uh, I'll let you do the talking and walk us through the, whatever you want to mention about the tattoo. And maybe at the end, I might have a few comments to, to throw in there. Well, uh, I like the image, you know, that guy, that guy, he don't, he don't want to, to, to tell the name, uh, uh, that guy came from Madrid, uh, he wanted to get a Dubai Pino Gaffaro. You know Pino? Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I don't know if COVID or for some reason, he couldn't make the trip. Uh, he asked Pino for somebody in Spain that maybe can do it. And Pino recommended me. So thank you, Pino. Uh, and yeah, we 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 decided to do what well, he, he really wanted Pinke. Pinke is super powerful image. And he has also 
a collection of old school tattoos in the arms. Uh, one of the interesting parts of that suit was to to put together with the with the old school tats he has on the arms. Uh, he has some Japanese image also at one point, but pretty much old school on the chest, the arms, and put it together with the background was 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 nice. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, yeah, I chose that pink image with with the arrows. No, you know the, the history of pink with Yoshitsune, and he was protecting him on the bridge. No, and he died standard is before he died. No, you know <laughs> with the, some some arrows, but he he's still fighting here. So try to yeah to do a powerful image. Try to do it simple also. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's many things I want to call out here. One of them is, is again the the limited color palette, which obviously works works very well. I like the the level of detail that you went into. So, for example, if you look at the at the mallet, the little hammer there at the top, yeah. right? I like the details with the wood. I, I always love that kind of stuff. So, kudos to you for for a job really well done there. And I also want to call out the what you just mentioned, right? Because I noticed on the left arm, I think that is he he does have another tattoo from probably somebody else, uh, but you still made made it just look fantastic. It looks like it's part of the cloud, right? So it's fantastic, yeah. you know, great show of skill right there. Yeah, I, I've been doing this uh, lately. A lot of people with many tattoos collectors, and they want to put it all together to 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 uh, to have the sense of the feeling of a bodysuit, a Japanese bodysuit. And it's a little bit challenging, but I enjoy it a lot to, mm-hmm. to try to put all together, put more order. I get it on my, myself on my my bodysuit. I have a huge collection of tattoos from many many years and from very different people. And when I get my back piece, I try to to put all together also. So I try to do background everywhere to to connect all the tattoos. Uh, yeah, I like I like it. Good, cool. Yeah, and obviously you're very good at it because that, that looks uh, very good. And then obviously for those uh, listening, because some people will be watching the video, some people might just be listening to it on on Spotify. You know, like that we mentioned the the standing death of of Ben K. Right, the story goes that he's protecting his his master writing, and and the enemies just keep peppering him with with arrows. Yes, yeah. and and he just dies a, a standing death. They don't even know he's dead because he just has this. Yeah look on his face and it's not until somebody goes you know up close and they're like oh wow he's he's actually dead but it's a very famous scene and it looks fantastic uh in here yeah yeah awesome all right let's see what else uh we've got in here okay yeah ducky no yaku yeah, that 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 girl. She's an amazing customer. Uh, she's super nice, super strong girl. Uh, he had Munewari also. Oh. Uh, so he he got the Munewari in the front with just peonies. So she, she has the Daki no Yaku image on the back piece, and uh, and then all the peonies in the rest of the bodysuit. I, I like it. I I did first both arms, and then we we go for the back piece. Uh, we talked about many images, and uh, he chose that one, which is a kind of dark story. Uh, Taki Oyaku, it's a courtesan, some murders uh, involved. Uh, it's a dark image, I mean, but I love the, the image, and I feel very grateful to do that because I think it's not not easy to do that one. Not many people will will, will choose that one. And uh, yeah, you, I, I'm sure you know. Uh, I, I got inspiration in in the original Kyoe. I'm not sure if, if it's from Joshi Doshi the the Kyoe. No, I'm not sure. Probably I'm I'm wrong. Uh, and then a couple of back pieces from from Horigoro Oriuno the third and the second, I think. The Ori Oriuno the third. Uh, more simple, more, more raw, even more raw. Uh, and only the second it was more similar to that one, more sophisticated, more close to the Okiyo. Of course, super simple, 
that that show I era style, no tattoo. Uh, but yeah, that that both bodysuits and the Kiyo Air were my main inspiration. I tried to to do it as, as more similar as I could to the Kiyo Air. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, it's very cool. You know, when I saw this the first time, I was very excited because, like like you mentioned, the, the Oriuno family has had a several renditions of of Takino and Yaku, and, and they they look great, right? Specifically, in, in in the style of the time, and then it's all it's also very refreshing to see this. Uh, I don't want to call it a modern tape because obviously it's it's uh, inspired by yeah, the original, but it's it's good to see it now, right? In modern times, yeah, it is. It is. It is. Uh, there is an, an Italian guy, you know, Shion. Shion has a front piece. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, I think we, I don't know uh, if, if it's from the same time more or less. Uh, that front, it's amazing. It's another, it's probably, I don't see very often that image. And it's, it's not a bad piece, but it's a front piece on Marco. Marco is an Italian guy. Uh, and it's amazing. It's awesome. No, again, this that's, that's uh, fantastic for uh, for those listening. Again, like, you know, Gabby, you have the, the courtesan in there. You have a, a flying uh, skull, if you will, right? And then some flames and some momiji. Again, like yeah. the color palette. It looks fantastic. You got the drinks in there. I love love to see it. So hmm. uh, that was very good. Very again, very. I was very excited. I thought it was very cool to see more modern renditions of. Of this great piece of work. Awesome. All right. Let's see what else we got in here. Yeah, Oniwakamaru. We just, it's, I own Ben <laughs> So, yeah, I, that guy, it's a, it's a guy from Madrid, Carlos. Uh, and he's super tall, super. I think he did it in, in one year. He came for two, three days in a row, long sessions. I, I do three hour sessions. Uh I think he he get tattooed five, six hours <laughs> sometimes. He did it so fast, super strong. And yeah, two to three days in a row, so super, super strong. He has also a lot of Cool tattoos, old school tattoos, but he asked it for, for a back piece. He wanted uh, on Wakamaru. He was so, so clear. Um, yeah, I like that one. I use blue in that one. That, 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 uh, try to, to not to do it super bright. But for some reason, I could use probably gray and it will work also. But for some reason, uh, I, I choose some cold color like, like blue. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think it, it works. I'm still looking classic. Uh, also, I, I try uh, some spirals from the top that it's water. So I did it opposite way as if it was wind, no? the, the wind spirals. But the shading, it's in the opposite way. And I think it, it works cool, like water. Yeah, also the, the coin. It was a little bit tricky, but of that coist, the red one, the little red one, it's on the, where the, the, the skin and the body mm, shape curves a lot. So Man. it was not easy. And, and, and also the placement on the, of the head of the big one, the giant card, uh, it was a little bit tricky. I like the story of when you walk me, Wakamaru, uh, how here he was fighting that giant carp that eat the his his mother, no? And I, I like it that in it. This is, this is awesome. I'm, like you said, I think the, the blue really it, it works very, very well because it looks great. And yeah, I'm amazed how, you know, at, at the two things that you mentioned, first of the big boy, the black boy there in the middle, it, it sort of goes across the, the glutes or, or the butt. And yeah, and you made it work, right? The the lines still look perfect, even though obviously there's a <laughs> there's a, a body shape that's in the middle in there. Yeah, no, yeah, ready of the word. Um, and then the the red um, boy there on the I think that's the lower right leg. 
and the lower yeah. right leg. It's it's on the thigh, but then it also takes part of the of the right butt cheek, and that's very hard to to get right because if you know if you, you don't take care of it, uh, if you don't do it well enough, then it might look distorted, right? To the people yeah. looking at it, and so but this stuff's really distorted. Just, it's not super important. Maybe uh, sometimes I saw tattoos that I love it, and the drawing is not perfect. They have crooky parts. So, uh, you know, Wabi Sabi, it's okay. Mm. A little bit, not good, it's okay. But for some reason, I got obsessed sometimes with stuff like that. It takes forever to, to find the, the good the good line and change and change that till I, I'm happy with it. But probably it's not super important. The, the most important is the, the, the impact of the image and the, yeah, the feeling you got in, in the first look. Don't need to to put too much attention in that in that things. I th I think so, but when I when I'm doing it, I I put a lot of attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks fun. It's, I mean, no, hundred percent. I mean, this looks very impactful. The image. I also like the the size is just right, so I'm sure you could stand from very far away and still tell what's going on. I think that's very important. I've heard it from many. Orishi, right? That, that that's what they aim for. That you can look at it from afar and you can tell what's yeah what's happening. So you can you can see that here. And then you mentioned the wabi sabi, of course, a hundred percent, especially Japanese. That being a, a, a concept from Japanese culture. But still, yeah, it's also good to call out that hey, when you get it right, it just looks fantastic. So I did want to call it out that you did a really good job there with the uh, with the shape of the body. So thank you, thank you. Cool. Yeah. And let me see what else. Yeah, I also like the the chrysanthemum uh, patterns that you did on the on the clothing. I always like to to see that. So very cool. Yeah, very classical. Uh, you you can find new Kiyoe with that kind of patterns. I think so. Well, probably change. Uh, oh boy, with the the chrysanthemum on the on the lower part. But uh, yeah, it works good. Yeah. It does. It does. It looks great. Also, awesome. all right. I think we got one more picture to to walk through. There we go. Ajagaki ime. That's a little bit different, you know. I tried to do something. Uh, what? Not. Not try. Just it. It, it came out like that. Uh, some smaller figure. I. I do sometimes. Huge image, big image. And uh, I try here to do it not super big, to try to to keep it powerful, uh, but feminine. No, it's a girl, and I, I wanted to keep it feminine, something that that looks beautiful for for her. Also, also the background. The background it's a little bit different. I try different things here. Um, more detailed um, background and uh, maybe more more movement, more can you know canto style, no, all that kind of wind bars, more thin, not that thick, like uh, like like Kansai style, which is more more the the tough Japanese style, Japusa style here. Here it's maybe a little bit of influence from. Uronuma, no, for Yoshi the second, no, that that mm -hmm. kind of background. So far from him, of course, the master, but but trying to to do that that kind of feeling for for her. She she has first the the arm, it's a chrysanthemum arm with water that I enjoy a lot. It has a nice flow, and and they then she chose to do Yagaki. It's a, a love story. It's a beautiful story. Uh, with the with the spirit of the fox helping her to to cross the the lake, the frozen lake, um, yeah, I like that one also. Thank you for choosing that. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is great. And you mentioned Kuronoma, and and I was thinking about Kuronoma also did a Ayaga Kihime back piece that 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 also obviously looked great. So it, it's. For me personally, it's great to be thinking about that classic uh, piece and then seeing a, a more modern 
take on it right here. Uh, you know, you did again, a lot of details in here. You look at the helmet. I love the details throughout the helmet. I love the details, even on her headpiece, you know, with the little flowers and, and all that stuff. It looks fantastic. The, the flowers on her robes look great. And, uh, no, yeah, that it looks just, just fantastic. Love seeing it. You know, I I've noticed that you've been doing a lot of pieces that you don't see that often anymore, at least in the West. But somehow yeah. you, you, you get to do them. So I thought that was very cool. And I wanted to show some of yeah, the, like very lucky. Yeah. I'm very lucky. That one also, uh, it, uh, with that one, I took for reference a lot of Ukiyo-e. Um, and I choose one from, uh, not that old. It's from Meiji era at Chikanobu. Uh, I didn't know him before. I found it image. It's from a triptych, uh, that, that that image is on the middle, and and the other one is pretty much the background and um the spirits that that kind of flames like the fox spirits. And I used that image, and it was great because I didn't knew him since I I had the change to to do that one. Chikanobu, it's amazing. You know, Yoshi's big super huge reference. That that Uni Wakamaru back piece is from very well known Gyo from Kuyoshi. But sometimes when you you research for to do a tattoo, uh, yeah, I still uh, discovering new artists and and it's almost uh, yeah, you can never end it to discover new new people, new artists. To get inspiration. No, that's that's great. In fact, that leads to another question that I have for you. But before I ask you that question, I think it's also cool that that you mentioned that you know you're you're discovering uh, other artists, right? Because most people they stick to to Kuniyoshi, to Yoshitoshi, maybe Kunisada. Maybe the, yeah. if they stretch it, they might do Hokusai. Hokusai also did, did obviously a lot of very good mm. prints that could be adapted to, to tattoos. But then it's great to see to hear that uh, you're also getting inspiration from these other figures that are actually very popular too, but just perhaps not that popular within the yeah. the common tattoo yeah. writing uh, repertoire. Awesome. All right. I think I was the last picture. Let me stop sharing. And and that's a great transition because my next question is actually what have been some of your your biggest influences in, in your career, but then also in your style? Well, I mentioned uh, Molda for sure. Uh, he teach me pretty much all the base that I know about tattooing, and he probably the mo the most important thing he teach me is the passion for tattooing and the love for tattooing. Of course, it was something that it was in me before, but his passion it's super uh, uh, inspiring to me. So Monga for sure. And then my friend David, who works with me uh, here at the studio, has been also a big influence. He's super great tattooer and he has an um, incredible ethic and he works super hard. Uh, super uh, inspiring to me. The way he works, he approaches every tattoo, the love he puts, the work he puts. So directly um for sure Monga and David and of course Rico Rico and Sean. Rico and Sean I beat them at, I think it was 2000, 2009 uh my first trip maybe oh, 2007 I don't know I'm not sure that trip uh changed my mind about Japanese tattoo at that time I was looking pretty much for Yoshi the Firm, which is an amazing, an amazing artist, a uh, huge influence. Uh, uh, the first, probably the other work, still uh, being a, a big influence to me, and I love it. And also more recently work. Uh, but at that time, I was published a lot on Yoshi's work. It was a big influence, but not directly, you know. And then in that trip, I meet a lot of nice people that tell me, yeah, yeah, of course, this is amazing. It's a great master, but, you know, traditional tattooing, 
uh, it's more like this to me, not the, their opinion. I, I was super open to to listen to to. I, I meet uh, Ritsu. It's now it's Kyoto Ritatsu, and he showed me a lot of tattoos that I didn't know before. The, for even maybe a little bit older than me, but from my generation, not old school tattooer, not not super old, but like Horimomo and uh, Doshi. Uh, a lot of tattooers, the Horikyo family, you know, and that changed my mind. Uh, not direct influence, but indirect influence, you no. Know? And then I had the chance to to go to visit Rico and Sean, and I spend a week with them. I get my first start with Rico. Uh, yeah, they have been a huge influence. They helped me a lot. I learned a lot from them. Uh, in some kind of friendship, yeah, we are friends, so they they just share with me as friends. Yeah, look at this, uh, oh, good, uh, maybe you can do this. That. Uh, they show me a lot of books, a lot of reference, so I, I, I have a, a, a nice new direction to to go. So, yeah, that's my my, my direct influences are that. But of course, uh, I look not today. Maybe I, I look less. I try to look less the work of others that was. But a lot of people that I love the work and has influenced me directly and indirectly. And and of course, all all the masters. Orihide Yokosuka Orihide has been a big influence. Uh, I meet uh, him through Rico and. Sean and and his work always amazed me. I, I had the chance to to visit him and get tattoo by him. Uh, he was 86, 87. It was a great experience. Um, he, yeah. Yokosuka Horihide has been a big influence also on, on his work. Many, many people. But that, <laughs> that, 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 that Monga, David, Ripo, Sean has been very, very close here for us. Like, I'm very thankful to them. Cool. And then you mentioned that obviously, um, you, you mentioned that like not so much anymore, like the, the looking at others and, and just grabbing, you know, influences and such. So are, would you say that you're doing like more looking at Ukiyo-e nowadays or, or looking at other yeah. of inspiration? Yeah, since 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 the the moment that I I choose to do only Japanese, I try to do that, but it's so difficult. So of course it's inevitable inevitable to to look to other work, but but yeah, nowadays mm, try to to look to Kiyoe paintings. Go to Japan; it's a uh, it's super experience. Go to the temples to see the nature, probably. You can see everything on the internet. You can see, you can find everything in there. But to me, maybe the way I learn, it, I need it. When I, when I go there, uh, everything makes some kind of click and connect everything. And, ah, okay. That's why the leaves draw are draw like that. And yeah, you can, you can see it in, in the books, the internet, you can find everything in, but to me, going there is the the main inspiration nowadays. Yeah, have the chance to visit the temples, look at the paintings, the sculptures, life, not there, trekking on to the mountains. It's it's amazing. But they're still having a lot of books and searching in books. I remember, and of course, still looking a lot of Japanese tattooers work, even on now tattooers that are. Uh, amazing. You know, I have, I have, maybe you know that little books. That's one thousand Japanese tattoos. Uh, uh, there's three, four volumes, and you can see everything. A lot of tattoos. Is some super ugly, but super cool, super Japanese. So, so try to to, yeah, to look everywhere and nothing. Like I just look everything at nothing super specifically. Just 
as closer to the root as I can nowadays. To not um, get more diluted and diluted and yeah, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. You know, I, as I was as you were saying that, I was thinking about a uh, relatively recent interview I had with with Hori Budo, the first of the of the Hori Toshi family, and and he was mentioning just that, right? That hey, it's so important to to go there yeah, and you got to see things with your own eyes, right? You got to look at the yeah. temples and the carvings and the statues and how things move, how the flowers fall, and all that stuff mm -hmm. because it's going to be so inspiring and it's going to help you so much in in developing. Again, from that source of truth, from that root that you mentioned. So it's very cool. Yeah, to totally, totally agree. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Yeah, I don't know why, but for some reason, everything makes the right connection when you when you draw it and see the books, and then go there. Everything put put together and and start to to work. To for me, at least, it works better. Not only searching in internet or books, but you know, everybody do what he can do, what they can do. So, and everybody has his own way to do it, and everybody learns different. So that's the way I I try to keep learning. Cool, cool. I I, I love how you're so humble, and and you just just mentioned the <laughs> and these things like hey, everybody. It's unique and everybody learns in, in his or her own way. But of course, we're here to talk about you. So obviously very interested in, in hearing how you do it. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, I think I got two more questions uh, for you before we we carry on. But so I'm curious, what is your view on the Orishi or the tattooer and, and client bond while you're doing the tattoo and the after the tattoo was done? Oh, that's interesting. Well, I feel lucky. Most of the customers became uh, are super nice, and and I think they feel good uh, during the sessions and during the process. And I feel good also. Everybody's different. Some of them became a little bit more closer, and we share a lot of daily things. Uh, uh, and some others are more reserved and need just more relaxed, uh, so we don't have too much time to to go deep on the relation. But uh, yeah, I take I do care them, and I I ask always about their life, how life is going, family. Uh, we have a little chat at the beginning uh, of the sessions um, and also during the session. But if not, again, at the end of the session, uh, we have a little chat about the trip, about where are they staying, where they we he can go or they can go to have lunch or food. Sometimes I share a drink with them and all the, the food. The first sessions... Uh, I like to do it more uh, uh, because first sessions are a little bit longer. Uh, it takes time to draw, to put all together, do the right composition. So the first session are a bit longer, in my case, and and I like to share food with them. And and yeah, we, we try to I try to know a little bit more of them. Um, yeah, you know, it takes time to get the back piece, for example, some other or sleeve. So people can came once at months, at months or twice every three months. So it's a long time. You have a lot of time to to know the people. Some people I've been tattooing them for years, years, five, six, seven years, and they they got married or have kids or change got divorced, and and we talk about that. Some people even. It's kind of therapy came here for some people. They they can talk uh, about their feelings, and it's an interesting think about about that now. How it depends on the how people emotionally are in that uh, uh, in that moment of their life. How affect the session and how they can get the pain. Sometimes it's super hard 
session and if you talk a little bit you you ask a little bit you you can find that they they are going through a not easy process in the life or inside so it, it get reflected outside and that inner pain uh, or emotional pain for some reason when when the physical pain of the twin came uh uh became a little bit too much oh. or or not or some kind of therapy it depends on the person everybody is different um, but can be intense sometimes can can be intense but it's it's okay it's nice it's a, it's part of the week it's part of the week and when they finish it depends uh of course we don't see some people came from other cities most of the people came from other cities but i like to ask from time to time how oh, life is going uh i exchange some message uh and have chats uh send me some pictures of holidays showing the tattoo uh or with children if they have kids uh, hey i have a kid now yeah they send me that super cool happy with that or sometimes just came to visit the city again and they sent a message and hey, are you and they came to say hello cool no, that's, that's very cool you know i always ask this this question because you know some people might be thinking about getting a tattoo from you or maybe this is the first time that they hear about you but they want to get a tattoo right and so this question kind of like shows them hey here's how uh that we did this case is here here's how the process might be and kind of opens them up to possibilities of, of getting work but then also it's very interesting just to hear again different perspectives and, and different experiences so uh that's really one of the reasons why i like to ask this question and and you know get everybody's safe cool all right i got one more question for you and that is you know we talked about your past we talk about what you're doing now what's what's happening next what's next in the foreseeable future for you uh i don't know i don't know um just keep tattooing and try to keep it uh, doing better if I can and make customers happy and make people happy. And that's it. Probably slow down a little bit. I'm going to have a chill uh, kid now. Uh, uh, I would like to slow down a little bit uh, and focus again. You know, I've been through different phases and... Uh, sometimes I dedicate more time to study. Uh, the last years I've been super busy. A lot of customers wanted to get tattoo, and I did with a lot, which it was okay also because it has been some kind of uh, training, like in a dojo, no, that uh, hard training, so you can fix or or I don't know how to explain, but. Put everything together in a more spontaneous way, not mm. super study everything, just need to, okay, uh, go with the flow. Now, today, this is the feeling and how it is, and it's going to be a great tattoo, that's it. And it's okay, but sometimes I miss more time to, to, to draw, to study, not only for customers, just for the, 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 the joy of painting or drawing. So I think it's time to slow down a little bit, uh, enjoy family, and take more time to to study again and draw. Uh, yeah, and I don't know. Let's see if I put this or never notice. But that's an idea. Just keep keep it doing it, but a little slow down a little bit more. We're relaxed. Well, well, first off, congratulations on the upcoming. Uh... Baby, you're definitely going to have to keep us slow <laughs> because it's going to take a lot of your time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, congratulations. And uh, yeah, that sounds that's, that's awesome. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of the work that you put out. Like I, like I said at the beginning, you know, when I do the short videos with the, the different figures, your name always comes up. So I'm excited to, to hear, hear it more often and just see more of your work, uh, you know, evolve and, and, and just, you know, keep seeing you do very good work. So Thank you very, very much for, for your time. It's It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you. To, thank you for having me. Thank you for the work you are doing also. 
Yeah. And we see in the future. Let's see <laughs> what's happening. All right. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about the world of traditional Japanese tattooing, follow the Waburipedia Instagram page, hit like and subscribe in the YouTube and Spotify channels, and stay tuned for the meanings and stories behind Japanese tattooing, Horishi interviews, and more.